Alright, hello guys, how's it going? In today's video, I'm presenting you guys with my third fall forecast for the year of 2020. Now, before I get started with this video though, I would ask that you do subscribe if you do like weather related content and also make sure to share this video with your friends, family, and social media. Now, I'd also ask that you check out our very exciting Patreon page down below in the description and the pinned comment. That's also where you can find our very exciting Discord server and our very exciting Facebook group. Now for today's comment of the day, I want to know, do you think we will have more tropical storms in the month of August or more in the month of September? Let me know in the comments down below. Let me know why, and I'll be picking one of those for tomorrow's video. Now let's get into this video. We're taking a look at our precipitation forecast first things first. And as you can see, we are expecting some above average precipitation here for the Pacific Northwest, up through a lot of the north central United States, and then back down through a lot of the upper Midwest, the Ohio Valley, and as well as the Great lakes all right so this is probably going to be an active storm track throughout the fall months and i also expect if you've seen our winter forecast that this will likely be an active storm track well throughout the winter as well a similar one at least it might be a little bit different but i think that it could be quite similar and obviously once we're in november we're going to be getting into that winter pattern so it would be quite likely that we see a very similar storm track in november and in december and january it's going to start all coming together very very closely all right, now what we're going to do is we're going to add, in just a moment, our moderately above average precipitation regions. All right, so now we're taking a look at our first moderately above average precipitation region. And as you can see here in California, Oregon, and as well as Washington, this pattern is very, very common for these areas during La Nina patterns. And we are entering a La Nina currently, if you've kept up with our recent videos. So we are anticipating that we will be seeing... Uh, La Nina type pattern for the fall time and the winter time as well, which usually includes some above average precipitation throughout the Pacific Northwest and especially the Great Lakes as well. All right, now here's our second above average precipitation region. And as you can see for Minnesota, Wisconsin, Michigan, Illinois, Indiana, and a little bit of Ohio there as well. We are expecting some above average precipitation throughout these regions as well. Again, this is just kind of an extension of what we're expecting for the winter months as well. So this is all going to come together, especially October, November. This pattern is really, really going to set in. The one thing I will mention that is going to be the most noticeable difference this fall from our most previous ones is the lack of nor'easters. Now, we're not going to see an active nor'easter track that's not very common in a La Nina, so we aren't anticipating very many nor'easters at all. So we aren't going to see that well above average precipitation for the East Coast or the Gulf states unless we see some tropical systems come through. Of course, that would shoot your averages way, way, way into the above average column, of course. Now what we're going to do is we're going to start talking about the below average precipitation regions in just a moment. All right, so here's our slightly below average precipitation region here. And as you can see for California, Nevada, the four corner states, a lot of the plains there like Nebraska, Kansas, Oklahoma, and through Texas, and a lot of the deep south, but the interior deep south there as you can see, because again, the possibility for tropical activity, I'm going to leave it at average to play it safe. If it wasn't for tropical storms, I would say below average precipitation all throughout the southeast and the Gulf Coast, but with the possibility of... Uh, some tropical systems. I'm just going to leave it at average and kind of go on the middle ground there. Anything is possible uh, and likely many of these regions will see well above average precipitation if any tropical systems come through. But again, below average precipitation pretty much throughout a lot of the southern United States in a lot of the central plains, even Colorado and New Mexico there as well, and a lot of Texas. Now let's go ahead and add our moderately below average precipitation region here. And as you can see, those similar regions, Kansas, Oklahoma, Texas, New Mexico, and as well as Colorado there, we are looking for the moderate, moderately below average precipitation for this region. And really, that's just an area where we're much more confident that we will see that below average precipitation. It's quite common in La Nina's to see the storm track kind of curve up above this region. And also the models have just really, really been uh, pushing at the fact that we would see below average precipitation for this region. So those two factors uh, combined there is really making me confident that we are going to see uh, a pretty um, low amount of precipitation throughout that region. Again, no nor'easters really this year. So again, the, the coasts are pretty much going to be near average. The eastern United States is going to be near average as far as precipitation. It could swing either way. Nor'easters aren't impossible in La Nina pattern, so there is the possibility that we see one or two maybe, uh, and also tropical systems are going to be 
possible throughout all of the coasts. So I'm leaving all of the East Coast and the Gulf Coast in the average column. All right, now what we're going to do is we're going to move on and talk about the exciting temperature forecast for the fall of 2020. All right, so here we are taking a look at the above average temperature regions here. And as you can see, for a lot of the Pacific Northwest, the Southwest, the four corner states, the South Central United States, the Deep South, and the Southeastern United States, we're all expecting to see some above average temperatures. And you might be wondering why that is. Well, first off for the Southeast, we are expecting a bit of a Southeast ridge there. Uh, and really what that's going to cause is some warmer than normal conditions trying to push up the coast. It could be further up the coast at times or lower down, but really this is going to be the average location of those above average temperatures. And for the Western United States, we do have a warm blob of sea surface temperatures offshore of the West coast. That is going to bring some of those warmer than normal temperatures onshore to a lot of, the, especially the southwestern United States, I am open to the possibility that I think the northwestern United States could be a lot closer to normal or even in the below average temperature regions, but really that Pacific is scorching hot. So I think we are going to see most likely some warmer than normal conditions move on shore. All right, now to talk about our moderately above average temperature region here, as you can see for California, Nevada, Utah, Arizona, and a bit of Idaho and Oregon as well, we are just more confident in this region being above average than the surrounding regions. This is our most confident region in those above average temperatures. So you might be wondering, you're probably not though, because it's quite obvious, where are the cold temperatures going to be? Well, let's move on and take a look at those below average temperatures now. And as you can see, for the upper Midwest, a lot of the plains, the Ohio Valley, the Great Lakes, and even in through the northeastern United States, especially the interior regions there, uh, we are expecting some slightly below average temperatures throughout all of these light blue regions. All right, now let's go ahead and take a look at where we're going to be expecting some moderately below average temperatures. And as you can see, for the upper Midwest, a lot of the northern plains there, portions of the Ohio Valley, and then even up through the Great Lakes, we are expecting some moderately below average temperatures. We're quite confident in this. The models have been trending at this area being a little bit cooler. And I really think this pattern will likely set in, especially for November. So later on in the fall, as we're getting closer to winter, because again, this does look quite similar to our winter temperature forecast. And that's not a coincidence. It's because this pattern is already going to be setting up towards our winter pattern by the time we're in late October and through November, especially November, uh, where it starts to get colder and colder and colder. We'll almost be in our winter pattern by the time we're in November. That's usually how it goes. So just to recap again, the Southern United States and the Western United States are expected to be above average temperatures. And then for the upper Midwest and a lot of the Great Lakes, as well as the interior Northeastern United States, we are anticipating some below average temperatures or a lot of troughs. All right. Now what we're going to do is we're going to move on and we're going to take a look at that very exciting overall forecast in just a moment. All right, so here taking a look at our overall forecast, I'm just going to work it from west to east. And I wanted to mention this. I, I forgot to mention this, I think, earlier in the video. This might not be our final fall forecast. There's still two weeks left in August. I think I might be making one right, right at the very end, unless I really just feel like this doesn't need an update. But that's only time we'll be able to tell uh, what we're going to need to do with that. Now, for the Pacific Northwest, we are expecting some cool and stormy conditions. So even though you're anticipating some above average temperatures, it's still going to be a bit cool. Uh, the normal temperatures for a lot of those regions up there will be in the 70s or 60s. So I would consider that coolish if you're in those 60s uh, and it's going to be stormy a lot of the time, but you're still going to be slightly above average or near normal with those temperatures, though the normal is cool. Like I said before, now hot and dry for the southwestern United States. Obviously, you saw we were expecting some below average precipitation and some above average temperature. So that should be quite obvious why you're in the hot and dry column there. Now, mountain snow for the Rockies. That's very normal, very typical and not a differential from normal at all. We are anticipating the possibility for heat waves for Texas. New Mexico, Oklahoma, Arkansas, and Louisiana. This is always a possibility. We saw this especially last year in about September. So earlier on in the fall, I would not rule out a few big heat waves for this region. And it's going to be more dry than normal too. So those two things coupled together can obviously cause some problems. Now up to the north, we see cooler than normal here in this blue region. Uh, and that's just an area where we're going to see consistent troughing, like I said before. But within that, we do have that pink region. And that's where we're expecting some Arctic blasts 
especially in November. That's when it becomes possible to see some very frigid temperatures for this region. And I think we're going to get to a very early start for the winter pattern up there for the pink region. Taking a look at the southeast, we see very active tropics along the Gulf Coast and the East Coast. I already mentioned that before, though. As you head a little bit further inland, you see cool at times. I think later on we could see that below normal temperatures move further south and further east towards November. So I think it could be cool at times. Obviously, we will see cool downs that reach all the way to the Gulf Coast and the southeast coast. So cool at times is a very, very accurate portrayal, I think, of what you guys would be expecting as far as conditions. Now, for a lot of New England, we're expecting cold late, and what that means is later on in the fall, I think the cold air will arrive in a little bit of an early winter pattern, like I said before, for November, maybe even later October for that purple region, and then snow late for that white region, usually halfway through October or early November, we start to see snowstorms for that very northern New England mountainous regions up there, so there will be snow uh, before you know it in October if not November. All right, now for today's comment of the day, I asked you guys what will happen with that African disturbance that we have moving offshore of Africa as we speak. And Zeta Derv said, I think this new disturbance will become a tropical storm, if not a hurricane. And I have to agree, I think it has good potential, but we'll have to see what happens. All right, for our patron highlights of the day, I thank you all for becoming patrons. We have two diamond patrons in Mad Birds and Mark J. And we also have Donna Carnes, our platinum patron. I thank you all so much for supporting the channel. If you'd like to support the channel, you can check it out in the description or the pinned comment down below. We also post awesome content there. All right, thank you so much for watching this video. Again, be sure to share it with your friends, family, and social media. I will see you guys in the next video.